All right, it's Friday again. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Human Show. Like always, I'm your host Stuart. This is Edit by Andy. Say hi, Andy. Some sort of annoying me mugging me off, I imagine, down here. Excellent, good work. Right, so, today's video, all about fencing versus HEMA. And honestly, this is about as contentious or as opinionated as you're gonna find me. At the moment, fencing and HEMA seem to be at loggerheads. Uh, whether actually one is any good for the other, and there seems to be a lot of stigma around fencing when it comes to the Hemaverse. To a certain degree, when Hema comes to fencing, no one really cares, to be honest. I straddle both worlds. I am a professional fencing coach. I still fence. I'm a professional Hema coach. I do Hema. Uh, so I'm seeing both sides of this coin and the attitudes on both sides of the fence, as it were. And honestly, most fencers don't care. Most people who do fencing don't really know that Hema exists. Uh, but what we're seeing is there's actually a fairly strong opinion about fencing and sport fencing. Uh, full disclosure, when I say HEMA, I mean HEMA. When I say fencing, I mean sport fencing. I can't be asked to keep describing it as sport fencing or Olympic fencing. Fencing's fencing. HEMA's HEMA. Sounds like some wise folksy wisdom. So within the HEMAverse, there seems to be a few contentious opinions, let's charitably call it. Uh, about the validity of fencing and what it can bring to HEMA. Uh, so I got asked by one of my guys saying, well, what do you think about it? So here's my stance on it, but more importantly, why? Because uh, I feel that as a coach, and more specifically as a coach that straddles both of those worlds, maybe my approach is slightly more well-rounded and potentially more informed as well, because I've no particular allegiance. I do both. Honestly, it's brilliant. It's brilliant for HEMA, and it's probably at where HEMA is at the moment, fencing is probably the best thing for HEMA. That's going to be incredibly unpopular. Um, whack that dislike button. Do it. I don't give a shit. So, why do I think that? Well, for a start, HEMA is a fledgling sport, and at the moment we're kind of almost on this precipice whether we start getting taken seriously as a sport or if we stay as a niche hobby. For me, I would love to see HEMA progress as a actual proper professional sport. And I think with fencing, we can look at what fencing's done in a lot of respects and emulate that to be taken seriously as a sport. Conversely, there are some things that fencing does do that we can look at as a HEMA community and go, hell no, let's not do it like that because it's completely useless. The national governing body, for example, is a perfect example of how not to be a national governing body. Um, just my opinion, allegedly, British fencing are absolutely crap. They're very slow, very useless, stuck in the dark ages. Um, I've not dealt with them as much as I have to usually. Uh, I kind of do my own thing a little bit, but yeah, they're, they're a bit archaic. They're a little bit of the old boys club. Um, so we can take a lot of lessons, both positive and negative from the organizational side of fencing. So really from even at the most basic levels, fencing can help us look at what we want to be or what we don't want to be. So we can use fencing as a yardstick almost to measure ourselves against and be like, okay, cool. It would be great if we could do this like fencing does. Or we could look at it and go, right, okay, fencing does this. We don't like it. Let's look at that and use this as a cautionary tale to avoid. Now, obviously, I'm being a bit more extreme against British fencing than I actually am, just because it's kind of fun to rag on people. They're not that bad. They're just a little bit unorganized. Um, but actual sporting side of stuff, there are professional fencing coaches. There are paid, qualified fencing coaches. There are HEMA coaches out there. There are some great HEMA coaches out there. There are a lot of shockers out there for HEMA. Um, at the moment, and this is, as a coaching professional myself, this is the most annoying part, is there is no metric to measure ourselves against. There's nothing stopping someone buying some HEMA kit, and buying a bunch of swords and going, I'm a HEMA coach now. I'm a master at arms. I am X, Y, Z. That's incredibly annoying. Whereas in fencing, you actually have to qualify. There is a course that you have to go on, and it's not an easy course. So that 
right off the bat is one thing that Hema can hugely learn from fencing is actually give our coaches value. And I'm not saying we need to make it unnecessarily hard to us and them ourselves from anyone who considers themselves a coach now, but let's give the existing coaches an opportunity to qualify, to become qualified coaches, to give them value so they can actually say, look, I'm a coach, here is my evidence that I'm a coach, and this is my proof that I am of value, because there is some great work being done out there by some coaches. And conversely, there is some shockers. But we'll leave that one to one side until I'm in a much more grumpy mood, then maybe I can look at those. But another thing, actually, the criticism that if you fight in a certain way, if you behave in a certain way, if you move in a certain way, if you go for certain targets in HEMA, that you get accused of being a sport fencer, honestly is bullshit and childish, and we should knock it the shit off. It's really annoying me. Um, purely because if you look at the best fighters, a huge percentage of them have either done fencing or are current fencers. Fencers have a massively improved sense of timing, sense of distance. I'm just looking around for a fencing sword now. I'm just gonna shoot off a sec. Okay, so foil has a tip. Brilliant, it's a good start. So the reason why fencers have a incredible sense of distance and incredible sense of timing is because of the weapons they use. This is a foil, this is a fairly crap foil. But here is the difference between a hit and not a hit in fencing. Not a hit, hit. I don't even think the camera is going to pick up how little my finger is moving. This is the difference between failure, world champion. That tiny, 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 tiny movement is what fencers are trained to. Fencers are much more like a scalpel in the way that they are trained. Whereas at the moment, HEMA is like a hammer, albeit a fairly small hammer, but it is much more brute force and blunt force. We can hide in places. We can get away with slightly off uh, distance, slightly off measure, because there is a huge weapon there is a huge, great big blade that we can work with, uh, whereas there's nowhere to hide in fencing. In fact, if I stick this next to the mic, yeah, just so you guys can hear that it is actually moving. I'm not just trying to belabor the point. So that's the difference. So fencing training is really, really nuanced. It's very in-depth and it's been going on for an awful, awful, awful long time from a professional sphere, okay? So I think as coaches, there is a huge amount we can learn, but as fighters, there are huge, huge, huge benefits we can get from actually getting over ourselves, stop being so sodding childish about fencing coming into HEMA and actually embracing it. We can look at fences and go, cool, right, these guys move. They are fast, they have got cracking distance, they have got cracking timing, they've got much more concept, especially epaists, about hitting the arm on the way in, hit here first. Move this out of the way, you know. Primary attack here, working your way in and layering the fight rather than going too deep too soon to the body and then not really having anywhere to go from there. Um, so we can really look and embrace fencing and we are missing, as a community, we are missing a golden opportunity to look at fencing and be like, look, this is so much tighter and nuanced. Let's learn from it, let's lean into it, let's learn from each other. And likewise, honestly, as a fencer and as a fencing coach as well, there's a huge amount that fencing can learn from HEMA. Primarily, how to not be a stuck up old boys club. HEMA is so much more fun, so much more accepting, so much more open. And it actually has a little bit of self-awareness and it has a bit of a sense of humor. Whereas fencing is just so old school. It's stuffy, it's perceived as elitist, um, and it, it still is to a certain degree. Uh, and it's just, it's got no sense of humor and it's stuck in its ways. Uh, so I think fencing equally can look at what's happening in the Hemaverse, look at the community that we've actually managed to build ourselves and be like, yeah, you know what, these guys have got it cracked when it comes to the community side of stuff. Let's maybe look at Hema, let's look at how we can 
diversify what we're doing and be more open and accepting to new members, but not only people that go to public schools, uh, but of everyone, they make it hugely accessible. So I think HEMA and fencing have a huge amount that they can both learn from each other. More so from the technical point of view for HEMA, uh, we can really learn that nuance and that fine motor control. Whereas he, uh, fencing is more institutional, um, more attitude based, we can learn a huge amount from that. Honestly, we need to get over ourselves and start working together because an adversarial relationship is always, always, always going to be detrimental regardless. Um, and if they're, hopefully, you know, I've changed your mind. If you don't like fencing and you, you really see HEMA as something where fencing should just stay the hell out of, hopefully, if I've not changed your mind, then at least given you another angle to think on. You don't have to like fencing. Of course you don't. But it would be daft to totally write off a tool that could be used for other people just because you don't like it, just because it's not the way that you like to HEMA, it doesn't mean that it's not going to be suitable for someone else. So just because you don't like it doesn't mean that somebody else may not or may not benefit from it. So let's all keep an open mind about it and let's all work and benefit from a similar thing. Yeah? All right. Let's get into the questions. <laughs> Okay, so today's question comes from someone called Daniel. And Daniel asked me, in your opinions, should hand hits be allowed in HEMA? Yeah. Done. Easy. Uh, I'll add a little bit more into that because I just looked at the time. But honestly, yeah, it's, it's a target. It's a target. You get hit in the hands, points. Done. Easy. Now, that's not to say if you have a hand injury, you have a broken finger, or you're not confident being hit in the hands, or your gloves are a little bit crap, or you, whatever. There are many reasons why being hit to the hands could be a little bit wary, okay? But, it's a target. It is a target at the end of the day, and you know what? If you say to people, hand shouldn't be a target in HEMA, blah, 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 all you're doing is you're just removing something that could be done. What's the difference between saying, okay, well, if hands can't be a target, then sod it, why not knees? Okay, cool, well, no knee hits. All right, well, where's the leap from there? Well, no lower body hits, really. Okay, it, it just escalates from there onwards. Hands are a target. Get decent gloves, they're out there. I can do a video on decent gloves. Learn guard positions to protect hands a little bit more. Not a problem. If you have reasons to not want to be hit in the hand, you can always ask people to not be hit in the hands. But I don't think telling people that certain targets, certain areas shouldn't be allowed is just not the way to go. If it's somewhere you keep getting hit, you're not going to benefit from not making it an opportunity anymore. You're going to benefit from learning how to deal with it and how to work around it. Honestly, yeah, hand should be a hit in tar uh, a hittable target in HEMA. That's my opinion. Um, and we should work with that and get better at fighting in that way. Again, slightly contentious, but this is something that is coming up for me a lot. I'm getting a lot of questions of, Stu, what do you think about hand hits? Stu, should you do hand hits? Stu, do you do hand hits? Do you like being hit in the hand? Yes, it's fine. It's a target, okay? Um, so yeah, this is my stance on it. Yeah, hand hits should be a target. I don't see why they shouldn't be, unless there is a valid reason for them not to be. Now, I know that historically there's some um, curiosity around whether hand hits are valid, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, but honestly, what we're doing, HEMA is inspired by history. It's not actual history. Um, we are inspired by what's happened. We're inspired to work with what happened. It's not actually emulating it 100%. So yeah, let's, let's hit hands. And you know what? Let's work with it and let's get our coaches to help us out to not be hitting the hands. It's as easy as that. All right, see you guys next week. Bye. Get down off my fucking soapbox now.